Hey guys, I'm Toby, and I've been on the hunt for a fast and affordable 2TB external drive for my Apple M1 MacBook Air. I primarily edit videos, so I have my latest projects on this drive as I only have 256GB on the MacBook itself. So today I want to show you what I've found testing the Sabrent Rocket Q and Western Digital Blue SN550. Uh, we're going to try them in a Sabrent Thunderbolt 3 enclosure and also a pluggable USB 3 enclosure. When it comes to speed and the M1 Max, a Thunderbolt 3 is the way to go. Thunderbolt 3 maxes out at a data transfer rate of, of 40 gigabits per second or 5000 megabytes per second. So to my understanding, so does USB 4, which the M1 does support, but there aren't really any USB 4 products on the market. Now you may be a little confused with the difference between a Thunderbolt and USB. First thing you want to note is that Thunderbolt and USB ver varieties both use USB-C connections. The new reversible one that is becoming more and more common. Thunderbolt 3, however, is more rare. Thunderbolt is developed by Intel and needs to be licensed. Most Thunderbolt cables tend to be labeled with a Thunderbolt and manufacturers need to license and certify Thunderbolt from Intel and they want you to know that you have the real deal. All right, back to the speed issue. Uh, one step below Thunderbolt and USB 4 is USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2, which maxes out at 20 gigabit per second or 2,500 megabytes per second. But the M1 Max don't support this. Instead, the highest USB 3 transfer speeds supported is USB 3.2 Gen 2 at 10 gigabit per second or 1,250 megabytes per second. And remember, these are all theoretical maximum speeds. So let's talk affordable. The baseline here is the Mac itself. To upgrade to a two terabyte internal drive, you're looking at around 800 US dollars or a thousand Canadian dollars in my case. There are of course many benefits to an internal drive, but I think for a lot of us, the cost and the value of it locked inside the Mac means an external drive makes more sense. There are lots of portable drives out there and prices are always trending downward. You probably come across a Samsung T5 or T7, but in terms of Thunderbolt external drives, there are definitely less choices. The Strabrant all-in-one Thunderbolt 3 drive is at two terabytes, it comes in around 400 US dollars, and the pluggable two terabyte drive is 500 US dollars, both more than I wanted to spend. And so given all the above, that's how I arrived at trying a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure and purchasing a separate two terabyte NVMe drive. This, the M.2 2280 variety, that seems to be the most common. The Sabrent Thunderbolt 3 enclosure is currently 70 US dollars on Amazon. And the Rocket Q is around $220 and the SN550, $225. So in total, around $300. As an alternative, I also wanted to see the speeds of these drives in a USB 3.2 enclosure as well. So I tried the pluggable, toolless USB drive. The USB 3 enclosures are cheaper and offer more compatibility. Say, for example, if you want to transfer files to an iPad Pro or other USB equipped devices. So would Thunderbolt 3 make that much of a difference? For testing, uh, I'm using the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, and here is what I found. Uh, first, side by side, running the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test in the Thunderbolt 3 enclosure, both the Rocket and SN550 start off pretty strong, but then you'll notice that the Rocket begins to slow down. Now, I suspect it to be thermal throttling, as the enclosure got quite hot quite fast. But as you see, the SN550 keeps its speed up in the very same enclosure. The result of the Sabrent was uh, surprising to me since I assumed the Sabrent enclosure and drive would work well together. And in fact, this is the first combo I purchased but was quickly disappointed as these speeds were only slightly faster than my current one terabyte four-year-old external drive. Placing each drive in the USB 3 enclosure, we do see the speeds slow down and especially the read speeds, which is curious. But again, the Rocket Q drops off dramatically. The Sabrent Rocket Q is an entry-level NVMe 
drive-in, there are certainly does seem to be some limitations, whether it's compatibility with M1 Max or thermal throttling. Now, speaking of thermals, this is a big takeaway for me. These NVMe are often used with heat sinks in large PC builds, and in those environments, there are much more active cooling. In the case of portable enclosures, heat dissipation is always going to be an issue. Now, I was hopeful for the pluggable enclosure. Its toolless has aluminum fins for passive cooling and is vented. Uh, its write speeds were very respectable, but its read speeds on both drives, however, hold each drive back severely. So I couldn't recommend it if you have a configuration like mine. And when it comes to managing heat on the Sabrent Thunderbolt 3 enclosure, it is made of a much thicker aluminum, uh, especially the bottom plate. This theoretically helps to dissipate more heat, but other than that, the drive is sealed inside. It feels much more substantial, not too heavy to throw it in your bag, but it's almost like a tiny brick, whereas the pluggable is so light you might forget that you were carrying it at all. So what's the real world takeaway? First, you need to know your system, your needs, and the weakest link. Is it the drive, the connection type, the cable, the heat? Those are major variables. Second, you need to consider your most frequent transfer needs. For example, I often need to transfer videos from my SD card to a drive, and the read speeds from the SD cards are relatively slow, 150 to 200 megabytes per second. And in this case, it doesn't really matter if your drive can write 1,000 or 2,000 megabytes per second. In this very unscientific testing, what's my conclusion? Uh, I'm going to be keeping the SN550 with the Sabrent enclosure. Now with the Thunderbolt Equip Mac, I just feel it necessary, a duty almost, to actually take advantage of this port. The price difference between the two enclosures in Canada is closer to $60, which is not nothing, but I think it will be worthwhile. What I like about these options is that in the future you can always repurpose the drive and enclosure as your needs change. And in the meantime, for video editing with Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, I have a fast, portable drive to work off my MacBook Air. Now, with all this, I'm happy to stand corrected. So if you have different results, let me know and let us know if what you're using for an external drive. Thanks for watching.